How y'all doing? Everybody all right? This is going to be really chill. Now, I'm not really uh, all that strong on being succinct and uh, making my story. They said, you, you, can you, okay, you're going to have 12 minutes to do two songs and tell your testimony. Is that, is that going to be enough time? Like, 12 minutes? It take me 12 minutes just to get situated and sit down up here. But I want to just start by telling y'all a little bit about who I am, where I came from, because I was told that this is a, this is a church of, of, uh, of a lot of people who come up the rough side of the mountain. Right? Am I right? They tell me right? So just so y'all know, y'all my people, man. Y'all my people. I came up the rough side of the mountain, too. I came up uh, in a little town called Winchester, Tennessee, in Nash uh, just south of Nashville, and uh, raised just as, about as poor as you can imagine, and uh, had, a, had a terrible upbringing, loving parents, but uh, they were too young to be even thinking about having kids, and they had five boys, and I was one of them. I was the middle, and... Um, and and uh, it was a broken home. It was a terrible, terrible upbringing. My mama trying to raise five boys after my father left us when I was 11. And uh, I got my notes so I can stay. I've got the clock. <laughs> this clock is scaring the crap out of me. <laughs> and uh, and uh, so, so around, you know, so I, 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 I left home. I got kicked out of school. I was just troubled, 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 troubled. Troubled soul. Um, and I, when I was 17, I moved to Knoxville, Tennessee. And I realized real quick, I looked around, and, and everybody around me had a plan. And I ended up in a park, and I had overdosed the first time. And, and I was in a park homeless. And... Uh, and I look around and I'm going, everybody I know has a plan. Everybody's off to college, they're doing this, they're doing that. Ain't nobody told me about no plan. What, what do y'all, was they meeting somewhere in some kind of secret spot talking about plans? What, how'd y'all find out about a plan? Who told you about a plan? Because nobody told me about a plan. And so I'm in the park and I wake up one day and um, I decided there's no, I've got nowhere else to go. And the only thing I can think of is if this, there's maybe a, this God that I've had this, this sense of awareness of my whole life. And um, my only hope was to just pretend that this God existed. And I decided that morning I was going to pray to this God, because if this God ain't got no plan for me, I am really in trouble, man. <laughs> so I started praying. It was a simple prayer. It was, uh, it was, it was uh, um, just for God, show me my purpose. Show me why I'm here. What do you want me to do? Where am I supposed to go? Show me my plan. Show me where I'm supposed to be. So I started praying that prayer, desperately holding on. What I didn't realize was is that I was praying that will be done, right? We're going to do a lot of amens and, all, you know, all that stuff, right? You can, you can give a ride on, whatever you want to. And so I started praying that prayer. A year later, I end up back at my father's house and my, of all people, and my dad has a guitar, and so I start rehabilitating in his home, and I wake up one morning out of nowhere, 21 years old, and I wake up, and an entire song is in my head. I've taught myself how to play guitar. I've taught myself like three chords, and I look out the window, and this entire song is completely done, and all I have to do is run as quick as I can and get a pen and put it on paper. It became one of the biggest songs I've ever written in my life. It was, a, it was a big song for me with my first band. But
But the thing at that very moment, after a year of constantly meditating on that prayer I had, God had spoken to me in that moment and said, Child, this is your purpose. I'd never sang a song in my life. And I knew it. It was just strong. He showed it to me. And so I went from a park in Knoxville, Tennessee, homeless, to a year and a half later, I was signed to Atlantic Records and in the offices of Ahmet Erdogan, the man who founded Atlantic, who signed Ray Charles, Aretha Franklin, Led Zeppelin, Rolling Stones, Big Joe Turner. Uh, you just keep on and on and on. This poor little boy right here. <laughs> and, Back to the notes here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stray. So, so everything happened so fast for me. I ended up falling again. I still did. I, I had things in, in place, but I wasn't prepared. And so, in 2005, um, I decided to get s sober again. Truly, truly, truly sober. And I decided this time, I want to play music that I love. I don't want to do, I want to do what God, God, show me your plan. Show me your purpose. Where you want me to go? Again, every time I get to the point where I say, thy will be done, which is so difficult for us to do. But God wants us to be happy. And we can't trust him to let us, you know, to give it to him, right? And so I did that and... I wrote a I put a record together called Salvation and Lights and 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 it, it just became a critical success and and uh, took off and blew my mind and um, and then so this past year imagine that doing what you love and do what God give it to God and he'll 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 just make you so happy man he wants you to be happy because I'm happy <laughs> and so so this year this past year we recorded our our second follow-up, our follow-ups to Salvation and Lights, and it's called Shine for All the People. It's not called Shine for Some of the People. It ain't called Shine for These People Over Here or These People Over Here. It's for all the people. That's the God I serve. I get to go out. It's a privilege and an honor. That's right. It's a privilege and an honor to go out into the world and take this message of love, compassion, grace, redemption to the people of the world and show them where I've been and give them encouragement. That's why we're here, people. We're here to lift each other up, to love each other with no filter on the heart. Amen? Amen. Right, on? right on? So that's what I'm here to, to, to just share with y'all tonight, to encourage y'all, man, that no matter where you've been, just, just give it up, man. You got nothing to lose. And so this song is, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sing a song called Mercy Now. This song came to me uh, when I was in the middle of recording this album, and it's, um, it, it came to me three months before I found out that I, uh, my father was going to die. And he, he, he was going to die within a year. And, um, and to me, it's the centerpiece of the new record, which went on to win a Grammy. I mean, God, uh, God's too so good. And, um, and which that's a whole other story. I wish I had about f another hour or two. Um, but this is, this is a, the centerpiece to that record. And, and f the reason I say that is that because... The message of this thing, it, it was a healing song for my family when my father was passing. And, um, but we all could use mercy, and I'll be the first in line. So this is mercy now.
my father could use a little mercy now fruits of his labor falling right here on the ground His work is almost over Pretty soon He won't be around And I love my father He could use a little mercy now My brother Shackled to his fears and doubts The pain that he lives in It's almost more, almost more than living will allow People, I love my brother a little mercy now Oh, yes he can
I know every single one of us could use some mercy now. I know every single one of us could use a little mercy now. Oh. We got you on the feet now. Let's stop. Let's end this the way I always like it. And I like to always take it back to the roots, all the way back to kindergarten. It goes like this. Thank y'all so much. Y'all give it up for Matt Ferris.